Fito, beautiful and healthy hair through plants. It all started in Paris in the 1950s when Patrick Alès was a salon apprentice. He noticed that chemically loaded products were taking a serious toll on the hands of the hairdressers and the integrity of their clients' hair. Fascinated by nature, he decided to study the power of plants and the role they might play to reveal hair's natural beauty. In 1965, Patrick Alès launched his own hair care brand along with the opening of his very own salon near the Champs-Élysées, where celebrities like Brigitte Bardot, Jackie Kennedy, or Catherine Deneuve enjoyed Fito's powerful and beautiful results. Fito, plants in Greek, was born. It was an instant smash, and the products became soon available throughout the world. Today, Fito continues to combine 50 years of botanical expertise with advanced plant science in our high-tech, dedicated laboratories in France. Our products have the highest concentration of pure plant extracts on today's beauty market. Our formulas are over 95% botanical and up to 100% with zero parabens, silicones, or harsh sulfates. This award-winning hair care line meets the expectations of the most demanding hairstylists and clients. Both sensuous and serious, Fito is the ultimate brand in luxury hair care. Fito. It's classic. Chic. Botanic. Hi, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Hello. I'm Lynn. Hi, hi. Hi, I'm Lynn, and welcome to the episode of um, the episode of Peter Passion Project. Can you guys hear me? Yes, so I'm the managing director of Alice Group Singapore and also the brand owner of Peto, and I've been selling Fito in Singapore for the last 20 years coming. So I'm really happy to be with you guys today. Yep. Uh, and the weekend is approaching. And it's the month end and September is upon us. The year really goes really, really fast, doesn't it? So I'd like to introduce to our guest today. He is someone very special, very close to my heart. And for the 20, for over 20 years, he's an entrepreneur. He's also a life coach, a business coach, a strategist and a facilitator, a speaker, and so much more. And most importantly, he is my husband. And his trainings have brought him around the world, and he's also found out his roots in Singapore. So I'm really happy to have him here with our show, and let's welcome Jodi Dharmawan. Hello. Hi. <laughs> yes, um, so today he's going to speak with us about embracing change. So what's all this about, and what does a life coach actually do? And how does he facilitate teams and businesses? We're going to find out a lot more. So welcome to the show, Jodi. How have you been? I'm well, thank you. A bit nervous. <laughs> Why are you nervous? <laughs> I'm very camera shy in the first place. And now I got my wife to get me into a live show. <laughs> so... Uh, I want to ask you, I mean, I know the story. I've known you for the last eight years and you've always had long hair. Can you show audience that you have a ponytail? Your hair is actually maybe even longer than mine. So why do you have long hair and how long has it been since you had it? Well, let's, let's um, answer the part of since when. I think it started in, in, in the, in the mid-90s. Um, so prior to that, I've always had very, very short hair, crew cuts. Uh, and I find out that it's, it's actually a very, very high cost maintenance. Um, oh my goodness, you have pictures of me in my... Oh wow, look at that. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, that was, that was my, my younger days. Um, every two weeks, I literally have to trim my hair because it grows very fast. Uh, and I find it quite a hassle. Um, so I decided one day, I say, what happened if I just grow it? So I don't have to go to the barbershop every two weeks because I do not like doing that. 
I never quite enjoy doing that. So um, I've grown my hair since. And so and I just go and cut my hair once every maybe six to eight months. Yeah, I see. Because people always thought you like you look really cool with your hairstyle. Like you have this trademark look. You, know, you had this hairstyle since the 90s. So it's coming 30 years, 20 over years. Yeah, because Jody is in his 50s right now, coming mid 50s. Yes, 54. And you had it since your 90s, so it's quite some time ago. And um, you have been using Fito for the last several years. Yes. Since I introduced it to you. But also because you like it, if not, you wouldn't be using it. My sister has been using Fito for the longest time. She loves the product. Oh, yeah, that's right. Frida's been using it for a very long time. And uh, how has it been for you? Like, oh, I, you know. Actually, I quite enjoy it. Um, it I, I, I do find it... Well, the very reason why I grow my hair is because I want it to be hassle-free, right? Uh, and I find Fito product, it's quite hassle-free. Uh, hassle and um, it, it feels good. I, I like the smell of it. It's not one of those, you know artificial fragrance perfume-ish smell that you'd normally get in a lot of shampoos. Um, this one, it feels very, how, how shall I place it? Herb-ish, herbal-ish. Yeah, 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 the, the scent and the herbs inside. Right, it's like greenish. Yeah, I, I like it. Hmm. So can you share that's one of your few favorite Fito products? Well, um, I've been using this one. This is my my shampoo. Uh, it's you can... a Fito Fener shampoo. Fener. This is the one that I use um, daily because I I uh, I do a lot of sports, and so this is the one I use daily. Um, I also take uh, this supplement. Yes, Fito Fener. Yeah. So at my age now, we we do take supplements, so <laughs> additional things into it. So interesting enough, um, it, it really works. So it, In what it, sense? How does it work for you? Well, I don't really pay much attention to my hair, but what I do pay much attention was my plumbing. I used to clock up the, 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 the shower sink along mm. here. And now, um, well, for the past, I, I would say five, six years, um, definitely it has gone so much less. So that's good to know. And it's good to know that you guys are going to be giving away these two products to you guys today, to two lucky winners as part of the audience. We're giving away the shampoo that you like, Peter Fanet, Fortifying Shampoo. It's got lots of vitamin Bs inside. It's perfect for everyone to use, both genders. And we're also giving away the Peter Fanet supplements. And the supplements are perfect for, again, everyone to have, to grow very healthy, strong hair. Okay. Hmm. Lucky them. Yeah. So, um, let's tell us more about yourself, Jody. Like, um, what do you do exactly? And why are you known as the Entrepreneur Whisperer? Well, as you mentioned before, um, uh, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a life coach, I'm a business coach. But ultimately, it, it, it took me quite a while to actually embrace that word that I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I started my own entrepreneurial journey actually 30, 30 odd years ago. Um, but that word entrepreneur during my growing up days was simply a word that appears in a dictionary. Um, it's not quite a sexy term. What it says, if you actually now Google it, it mm -hmm. actually someone who is taking risk to expect... Um, financial rewards. So what does it sound like to you? But to Someone me, who... I am stupid. I will take unnecessary risk and, and I'm greedy. Uh, it doesn't sound glamorous at all. <laughs> not at all. It, it wasn't, uh, I, I was never aspired to be an entrepreneur. Uh, I was aspired to be a professional. So mm, yes, you went to a good school. Uh, I was very fortunate that I, yes, I got myself into very good schools. I was never an academic. I somehow win the hearts from the teachers that got me in. London Business School, just by winning hearts, I doubt it. 
<laughs> for it. I didn't go to London Business. I went to University of London, University mm-hmm. of London School of Economics. So I went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, yeah. Let's see. Created a Bachelor of Science in Economics. Um, so I did economics and accounting. I was aspired to be a professional. That's what um, people deem to be. They had successful people because they yeah. into um, a corporate, working for a big firm, get themselves a secure job. So being a professional, so getting a job in a, in a multinational firm is, is, is what it was in those yeah. days. But you became an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, you end up training lots of entrepreneurs yes. at the same time. How, how did that come about for you? Take a look at me. Do I look like an accountant to you? No. I've never met an accountant that looks like No. <laughs> uh, I can do it with my hair. Uh, so here's the thing. Um, when, I, when I come to realize that uh, I started the journey as a professional, wanting to be an accountant, um, basically giving that services that I'm a professional uh, to, to whoever I work for. Um, it never kind of like worked out for me. I felt that I, I, I am a square pack trying to fit into a round hole. Mm. It never works. I never fit into a form of systems. Um, until I met with a bunch of people uh, that kind of like share the same mindset as I do. And they call, they call themselves entrepreneur. Um, I started my own business in the end. Okay. I eventually decided to follow my heart, to listen to my heart, instead of trying to follow what the system asked me to do or make me to do. So I started mm-hmm. this, I was completely lost, but I met with a bunch of so-called entrepreneurs. Um, and what I do find something that we clicked uh, something that we connect is is the way we were built. Okay, is, interesting. Is never quite what it was described. We don't take any more risk than any others. It's just the way we see what risk is. Of course, risk has got different meaning to different people. Correct. It is the way we see opportunities where people most, most will see danger, we see opportunities. That's number one. Number two, I think the biggest part of it is we're driven by our passion, by our heart, what we believe in. Mm. Instead of here's is what is the to-do list, the job description, the standard operating procedures. I, I, I can't live with that. So you have been around the world to facilitate. So what do you facilitate actually, if you could share? Well, I, I embarked on this journey about 22 years ago. I joined this organization. It's called the Entrepreneurs' Organizations. With mm-hmm. us in Memphis. That's how we've met. Yeah, that's, that's how, we've how we met. met. These yeah. are business owners. Um, uh, and, and so somehow through these organizations, I, I, I discovered my skill. Um, I've, I have a good listening skill. And I'm very good in connecting the dots. And so they, they actually asked me to, to teach a specific product of theirs, which is a peer-to-peer learning platform. Mm. Um, in that peer-to-peer learning platform, it allows us to cultivate collective wisdom. Just think about it. In, in most learning institutions in the past, right, most of it are just basically specializing in a specific field. And entrepreneurship was never there. And so that's where we learn from each other. So it's something like this. And so that is me, uh, EO, now you do virtually, I can see from the pictures. Yes, I do. Now, now because of COVID, we do things virtually. I, in the past, uh, we meet in person. So I, I do fly around quite a bit. I spent two to three weeks of my, of my time actually flying in a month. Yeah, every week you're traveling. Yes. I think we hardly, pre-COVID, we hardly spend more than two weeks at the same place together yeah. or three weeks at most and it's rarely ever happens. Mm. Uh, most of the time you're here for a few days and you're away for a few days and that was how your life was pre-COVID. Yes. 
Hmm. So maybe we can share some pictures and you can tell us what exactly are you doing with whom and what do you do? Because okay. um, it's very interesting pictures that uh, we have gathered. Can you show some pictures, please? So. Yeah, so like, what, what are you doing here with this bunch of people? Ah, on, um, if you notice the top screen, um, yeah, that, that picture was taken when I was uh, facilitating the board of uh, directors uh, from an orphanage. Oh, was it to, is it one of those programs you have called the um, strategic alignment program? Yes, basically I helped them to come up with aligning with what they needed to do. They've just mm. facility burned down and um, they needed to do something about it and they were completely lost. It is a very, this, this, this particular organization, uh, this foundation helps the orphans by providing them the skill set needed to empower them so that they can then bring it home and build their own communities. So you facilitate them and you help them bring about their vision and maybe some kind of plan for themselves? Is that yeah. what you do? Actually, they already have a vision in, in their mind of mm -hmm. helping them to align everybody gearing towards that vision, um, coming up with uh, priorities because we have limited resource. So what are we going to do with the limited resource to get to where we want to be? All right, that's, that's, a, that's the tricky part, right? I mean, if you have a lot of resources, the sky's the limit. You just spend and do whatever you fancy. But when you need to be smart about the money spent um, to maximize, I would, say, I would like to say I maximize what I have, then we need to sit down and strategize and come up with all the um, different possibilities. And it, they cannot all just come from me or one or two. It should come from the whole team, right? The whole team effort. The important part is, allowing every single stakeholders in there to actually own the vision and to own what they are supposed to be doing instead of top down. This is just simply bubbling from the group. Mm. And what else do you do? I see that you've done a lot of um, speaking. You, you've been a speaker and been a panelist. You have some pictures on that as well. Yes, I, I, I have done a few of those. Um, You've done one for me, a couple for me <laughs> in my programs. Uh, is it, um, so someone has heard about me, what I do, um, and they're kind of like interested in my background, my upbringing, and also my, my thoughts. And so they asked me to share. So uh, that was the Women's Honor organized by the American Chamber of Commerce. You see mm -hmm. that? Um, the top picture. And also telling them what an entrepreneur is. Mm. Um, I've also helped out in the Lyra thing, yeah? Yes, for our Lyra Women in Leadership Conference. We had it last year and also this year. Before the circuit breaker, we managed to get it done. I also talked yeah. about leadership. Um, my, uh, my concept of my understanding of leadership is it, somewhat different from from what a lot of people uh, maybe were, were exposed to. Um, I promote a lot on servant leadership. What is servant leadership? We serve a purpose. So I, 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 I am a strong believer in, um, in this Chinese philosophy uh, coming up from Laozi. So you, you, looking at this philosophy, it's, it's dating back 500 BC, right? So Lao Tzu, uh, he came up with uh, a definition of what a leader is. So what is that? Form of a leader is the leader that nobody knows you exist. But when we have accomplished the task, everybody will say, "Yeah, we all did it." Instead of most leader comes to the front, they will basically some of them. They, um, they will look for people who admire them, ins inspire them. Xiang Jing Tong, I would call it Xiang Jing Tong, like the one in the front, it's all me, I take all the credit. Or some, some leader will use power to instill fear into them. And, mm. and, uh, but to me, the ultimate form, the ideology, the ideal leadership is the one that I don't need to be out there. I am the catalyst, I am the multiplier, 
I allow every single one in the team to be a better self. Mm. Together, everybody achieves more. And I'm just being a part of that team. So now that you used to always travel and meet them face to face or in a group session, sometimes it's a half day, sometimes a two or three day session, mm. uh, strategic planning and alignment with them. But now that you're doing it virtually, what is the difference? Like now we're also doing it virtually, that like we're meeting and having this show virtually. But how, how is that different for you? There, there are pros and cons. Um, mm -hmm. The pros of being in person, it, it's you actually get to connect with the person in real life. I also get to experience the journey towards them coming back. So when it gets to, uh, to all those places, uh, I, I, I always bring my running shoes. And that's the oh. to go and uh, enjoy the city. So I run around and that's a way for me to keep myself fresh, um, keep myself fit. And then I get myself into training and then I get onto the plane, I come back. Meeting them, um, I get to feel it instead of just simply delivering through a media. So that's mm. it. the con side, of course, it's being away from home, being away from you, of course. It's never easy. Um, but now I get to do it virtually, so I get to spend a lot of time at home. Um, it's it's different. It's not quite the same as delivering this in person. I find it uh, energy wise a lot more tiring. More tiring staying at home and doing training. No, when I'm doing the training virtually, uh, because a part of the training for me is to be able to hold the room, to be able to read the room. So I need to feel the energy. And now I don't have that. I can only see this part. Yeah, like now. With you, I can hear you, I can see you, I can feel you, I can watch your body language, and then I can tweak uh, um, adapting to what the room is need, uh, needs. Now I only see this part. So, so why is it more tiring now for you than when you had to travel up and down overnight flights and stuff? Well, the traveling, well, the traveling part is physically tiring, but I can, I can do things to get myself energized. I do my run, I do my meditations. But if I'm doing this virtually, so subconsciously, I'm just, although I'm just seeing this part, subconsciously, I'm trying to read what is behind your background, your whole body. Are you really engaging that with me? Um, so it's, it's mentally tiring. Ah, oh, I see. I understand. And you also do a lot of life coaching. Like yes, I do. Dharma life coaching. How, I mean, tell me more. Like, how is this different from like being a mentor? Ah, um, <laughs> recently I just delivered a lecture to, uh, to 68 lecturers in University of Chiputra. And, uh, they Chiputra were, in Indonesia? Yeah, in Indonesia. So they were asking me, they, they have this entrepreneurship program and uh, Pachiputra is one of the uh, uh, endeavors of entrepreneurship. So anyway, so the difference between a mentor and, and a coach, a mentor is someone who has gone through an experience of mm -hmm. what you are interested in and you want to learn from me. And then I will then share with you about my journey. So it is about you're interested in my journey and I'm just sharing that with you. And you take whatever is needed for your own benefit. I don't tell them what to do. A mentor, as a mentor, do I tell them how to do the business? Wait, no. It's their journey. I need to respect them. Okay. My job is just to be honest, genuine, and vulnerable and share what I go through. And trust them that they will pick whatever is needed for them to go through their own create their own journey that's okay, so so a mentor basically acts like the person who's been through it all and kind of helps another budding entrepreneur or business person uh, in a way where they just share from experience what i've been through my pitfalls etc we've got a question from one of our guests one of our audience sunita gills i thought a mentor helps with some form of accountability uh no that is what a, an accountability coach does. Ah. 
So quite often, a lot of people mix that up. Mm. So an accountability coach is someone to hold you accountable for what you said you are going to do. So from time to time, I'll come in and check on you. You said you're going to do this. I might ask you the why um, and then ask you what are the action steps that you needed to do? What would be your KPI? And then as an accountability coach, I would just simply remind you. Mm. So then how about a life coach? How does a life coach differ? Um, a life coach is a person who helps you to discover, who helps you to grow. Discover what? To discover your purpose, mm. your potentials. That's within myself. Yes, you have all the answers within. So going through that process allows you to discover, to learn more about yourself. Ultimately, it's you who needs to do the work. Not the How long will this process take? Like an hour, a day? Well, it all depends. From your, from your experience? Normally, it takes a couple of sessions, like four, four sessions. Each session could take about one and a half hours, one to one and a half hour. Uh, it depends where you are in your life. Some of them mm -hmm. have that purpose in life. They just simply want to grow. Some of them have a specific goal in mind or specific vision in mind. And somehow they run into some form of challenge. They're stuck. And I'm there to help them to unstuck that. So what if um, I, don't I don't know my purpose or my purpose is somewhat like, I just want to make money. Is, is that a purpose? Or how would a purpose sound like? A purpose is something that it, when you wake up in the morning, you, uh, you know exactly what you would die for. So it's what would be your purpose? My purpose in life, it took me quite a while to actually discover that. Um, okay. It's power. Say again, I missed you. Sorry, did we lose our... You say it, yeah, say it again. To empower. To empower. To empower, to contribute to a bigger picture, and to add values. And um, I know you've been around the world in many, many countries, and you train many entrepreneurs. Do you know how many you've trained so far? I, I lost count. I don't know. Probably about, probably close to 10,000 over the 20 years. And you've been to every continent? Yes, I have. Um, from America, for training. From America to Europe to Africa, the Middle East, um, of course, Asia. Uh, Asia Pacific. Is it <laughs> down New Zealand. Yeah. So what's the most exotic place you've been? or the most interesting country you've traveled for training? Um, I would say they all are interesting uh, because it's not just the country, it's the people mm. um, that, that brings in that whole flavor. I don't get much of an out, uh, I don't get much of a sightseeing, right? I just go in there and I have that short window for me to run and I get to have maybe a meal or two with them. And then I'm on the plane out. Uh, so a lot of places are, are, are fascinating to me because not the place, but the people. So can I ask you, since you've been to all these places, you met with so many kinds of business leaders and entrepreneurs, etc. Do you feel there's any difference between the different continents or country? Yes, they are. Have you observed any difference between us, like Asia and Europe versus down under to U.S.? Um, yeah, yes. Yes and no. Okay, do share. Yes, but I think that there's, there's a bit of a culture. The culture part of it is very different, of course. Um, we all come from different backgrounds, different upbringing, different environment. Um, there are people who are more goal orientated. They are more achievements orientated. There are, more, there are people who are more process orientated which a lot of times people will say that they are more laid back. They really enjoy the process versus mm. the result out. And there are people who said, I need to get that result out no matter what and neglecting the process. Um, and and, and in, it varies. 
So I want to ask you also, since you've met with many leaders, of course, you met with both genders, female and male. Do you find them different, again, around the world? Yes. A female leader versus a male leader. Do you see any patterns or anything? Um, at, at the beginning, we find the kind of like generalized things. These are the female type, those are the male type. After okay. we, I, I get to realize that masculinity and femininity has got nothing to do with gender. Okay. Please elaborate. What do you mean? <laughs> so, like, masculinity brings in the form of aggressiveness brings in in a form of results, achievement. And you see that both in male and female. Because so when women like myself who are achievers, we are seen as bossy and bitchy. We get a bit of negative terms attached to being driven. Well, that's a lot of perceptions in there. Um, it depends mm. on who is the one who's judging. I don't. I know, but I'm just saying in general. I know they don't really judge. Because I think that's the beauty of being an entrepreneur. Very different from, I, I, I differentiate that words, being an entrepreneur and being a businessman. A okay. Business, one who actually runs a business, he may be the one who's running it, but not necessarily the one who's owning it. He could be both. But an entrepreneur is the one who actually created the idea. He may or may not run it. Oh, okay. So they're more visionary, but they may not execute it. He may or she may have someone to execute it. Or at the beginning stage, while you cannot afford to have uh, a good CEO, you may be the one who is actually achieving it, uh, 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 executing it. That, that is quite common. But the spirit of an entrepreneur very likely is someone who has got a dream and I want to make my dream come true. And I believe in my dream. Um, there's also a big chunk of it has got to do is, is something that I love doing. It's a passion. Although the road can be, the road towards the journey can be very hard. They enjoy every step of it. And mm. most have this thirst for learning. They love to learn. And most of them just don't judge. They just are who they are. And they appreciate people who are being genuine. Okay. So coming back to life coaching and seeking my purpose, um, could you leave us some tips maybe to our audience to how we could start this journey? Because not all of us are comfortable engaging a life coach like yourself. Maybe we just want to start on our own and see how it goes before we engage a life coach like yourself. Could you share with us that maybe any tips or steps that we could do to start the ball rolling well when we are when you think about purpose it's what literally drives you what motivates you to do what you are doing so think how do we know that how do we even know that just simply close your eyes and ask yourself that questions and be genuine about it be honest about it don't have to come up with an intellectual answer but just simply be honest with yourself why am I doing this? If you do not have the answers, and so you need to understand. So when you get up in the morning, you need to do whatever you're doing. What are you doing it for? Start asking yourself that question. So that's the number one step. Um, the number two step is then you look for something that you're passionate for. Passionate does not mean you enjoy thoroughly. You enjoy the process of it. It could be a very hard walk, hard work, but you feel that you, you enjoy and, and, and the result is it, of it deserves all these hard work. You enjoy those efforts. So I'm passionate about something, but I may not enjoy doing it. Is that what you're saying? I may not enjoy the process of achieving it, but yet it's something that I'm passionate about. You may not feel comfortable in the process you may not find the process easy. So there's something that you're good at. When it's good, it makes it easy. Correct. Right? You may not enjoy it. You just somehow are good at it. And so you just keep on doing it, but you may not like it. 
there are things that you enjoy doing it, but you're not good at it. And you try to struggle to learn. Like my passion now is endurance sport. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to swim. I want to be an Ironman. I don't know how to swim properly. And at the age of 54, I am- you did, you did participate in some Ironman. <laughs> and so I run and I, I cycle and long distance. And now I need to, to improve my swimming. I can only do breaststroke. I can't do front crawl. And so I'm now learning how to do front crawl. I never liked swimming, but it's a part of the process. And I enjoy that. So what part did you enjoy? You, you, you enjoyed the running part or finishing the race or the fact that you've done it, the achievement of I've done it and put a badge on yourself, like I've finished an Ironman. I mean, what part of it did you enjoy? What? That you make yourself go through like 42km runs and going for swimming classes now just to learn how to swim better. Which part of it do you enjoy? It makes you keep going. I think the reason why I do it mm -hmm. kind of like pro, um, uh, motivates me. For me, is I, I want to keep myself fit. I want to keep myself young in a way without injecting things on my face mm -hmm. um, and i i have a very young son and i'm 54 right so when he grows into his teens i will be in my 60s and i still hope that i still have the energy uh, the mobility the agility to enjoy a young boys uh, my my own son uh, playing with him running with him and so that was the reason why I want to get into this. And the, uh, part, though I don't like the swim, I enjoy the part that I'm now learning a new skill set that is going to help me, that is going to improve me. So, um, and when I do my running part, I've been running for a while. I never liked running in the, in the old days uh, because we, really it's boring, right? Just, just. Mm. But now when I do run, I get to do my thinking. I love to think. I also get to observe what's around me. I when don't you're running, I run. While you're running, you get to observe. And the way you say your meditation, quiet, quiet time for yourself. I do that too. Mm. So when I meditate, I connect me with me. So when I run, I connect me with the, um, with the nature. Mm. Someone in the audience was saying that small things that helped her in coaching were the Gallup Strength Finder exercise that helps her to find some answers for a start. Uh huh. That's a good. So you are Gallup. You are Gallup uh, coach, right? Yeah. Um. So it's an interesting um, findings uh, from from Clifton. Uh, is that every single one of us has been given a set of talents? They were called talent themes. So do we know what they are? Mm. So he managed to come up with the naming process of each of the talent themes. He came up with 34 of them. I know mine. <laughs> and each one of us somehow have got a different combinations of the talent themes that we constantly use. So most of us use the top five or maximum top 10, and we play mm. the combination of, of it without us realizing it. Uh, and so there are some schools who said, we need to work on our weaknesses to improve ourselves. Yes, I've always been told that like, you're not good at math, go and get tuition for it and go get it up, you know, work on the things that you're lousy at and bring it up so you're less lousy in it. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the, if you're bad at it and you constantly work on it, the best you can get is, okay, I can survive. Yeah, I can maybe get a B because I'm bad, you know you will never thrive because it's not naturally your own talent. So very simple thing, right? Um, if anyone plays any racket sports, if you're naturally a right-hander, um, okay? <laughs> and I ask you to play with your left hand and no matter how much you train, you will never be as good as using your right hand. It is as simple as that. So are you going to use your right hand all the time? Not necessarily, but how do you use your strength, your talents, use a good combination of them to manage your life, to overcome your weaknesses. 
So it makes you to be a better version of you rather than changing you to someone else. So we should really focus on what we're good at versus try to make up and spend a lot of energy and time on things that we're not good at. Well, that you can. that's not the way I would put it. Okay. Know what are your talent themes. Okay. And then you should know when to use it appropriately and not to overuse it. Managing it. And so then you can turn that into your strengths. And then you build on your strengths. Because even though if it's your talents, if you misuse it, or if you overuse it, it will become your biggest weakness. It's true. It's true. I, I've been through this process, guys. It's called the Clifton Strength Finder. You can find it online. There's a simple test you can buy online. And you can take a test. The test is about 45 to one hour long, depending on you. It comes in different languages, English, Chinese, etc. whatever you're strongest in. And you take that test and it gives you the top five strengths. And then that's for like 1995. You get the whole package. It's like 50 US. You get all your 34 strengths from top to the bottom. And what I realized when I did this test maybe five years ago was that I finally realized that this is me. Oh, wow, this is me. And I stopped trying to fight myself and stopped trying to fight against or go against, you know, what is not me. And I realized I just embrace myself with this test. So I found it very good. I, I, I love this, um, the Clifton Strength Finders, where you really know your innate your inborn talents and then try to hone it better to become very good strengths and don't overuse it yeah um best is actually once you've done it do engage yourself with a gallup coach and mm. the coach can walk you through so that you understand how do you convert your talent themes into strength and help All you right. in real life putting real life examples to work on so that you can practice it because there yeah. are habits that you need to change yeah i, I admit I, some of them i realized i've overused my so-called talent teams and then i uh it's like fancy fancy boy you know like one of my talent teams is responsibility so i'm highly responsible it sounds good right but someone who's highly responsible like myself would then over be overloaded and then I'll be overly loaded and will not have enough rest and I'll be very resentful because I just take on too much because I am too responsible. So there's always two sides of the coin. So it's a good way to know how to use our innate talents well and so that we don't hurt ourselves and hurt the people around us too much, I guess. Would that be right to say, Jodi? Yes, yes. So uh, today's topic is about embracing change. And um, I just want to remind you before we go into your, the next segment, because you, present, you, are, you prepared, so kindly prepared a presentation for us to tell us how we can learn how to embrace change. And before we get into that, just very quickly, just to remind our audience that we're giving away two fantastic products today. These are Jody's favorite Fito products. It's the Fito Finesse Shampoo, as well as the Fito Finesse Supplements. Both of them are great for both genders. You can use them daily. The Fener one is fantastic. Like, please share with us. Like and share this video. Tag your friends. And tell us what passions do you pursue? So Jody pursues the passion of endurance sports. You know, what else do you... How about you guys? What passions do you pursue? I love dancing, so I like to pursue it as much as I can and take on more certifications with my Zumba, for example. Uh, so how about you guys? So for you guys to win this product, Peter Fanet, which is worth like 80 bucks, um, just share with us what passions you have. Yeah. Mm. So now Jody will take us on to the next segment of our show. It's a, maybe a 10, 15 minutes segment where he's uh, going to share with us how we can embrace change. And I guess it's such a fantastic topic right now because the whole world has changed. We're in the midst of great change all at the same time due to this pandemic. And a lot of us are trying to cope with it, right? So I guess this topic is fantastic for all of us to listen in. So I will leave it to you, Jody. Okay. Take it away. So um, is someone gonna help me to share the PowerPoint? Oh, wow, there you go. So 
So here we are um, talking about embracing change. So before I, I talk about how do you actually embrace change, I think one concept is, is that nobody likes to change. And yet the irony of it is the only thing that never change is change itself. So it's a matter of how do we cope with it, right? So there are many studies that if you Google it, it, everybody will tell you ultimately it comes with the mindset. It's all about the mindset. So on the next slide, here we go. So we can identify these four mindset that can help you to embrace the changes. So to me, I would rather be the one who initiate the change than having someone to change me. I like that control. So these are the four things that you can help. The first is the mindset growth versus fixed. Do you have a growth mindset or do you have a fixed mindset? The second is about believing in abundance versus scarcity. The third is, are you a learner or you are a judger? And the last one is, are you comfortable in changing your beliefs? We're gonna dive in to every single one of it. Let's look at the first one. What is a growth mindset looks like versus a fixed one? So have a look at the next slide. So in a growth mindset, you have a desire to learn. Now, go back to the day when you have to learn, when you love to learn. You accept the challenges and you're willing to be uncomfortable to step out of your comfort zone. As I mentioned before, um, I don't like to swim. I don't like water. But then again, I'm willing to step out of my comfort zone to accept this challenge because I desire to learn. And you will appreciate the efforts that you put in you will appreciate the value. And also you're willing to make a mistake. So failure in the mindset of a growth mindset is just simply success has yet to happen. So you allow mistakes to happen and you look into the learning. And the last bit of course, is that willingness to receive constructive, constructive feedback. So these are all the mindset needed for someone who wish to grow. If you have a fixed mindset, you're just simply defending yourself and you're stuck where you are. And as a result, you will never change. Hope that makes sense. The second one on the next slide is about the concept of abundance versus scarcity. It's kind of like putting optimistic, optimism and pessimism. Right? Um, when you think about abundance, it comes from a place of love versus fear. So a place of love gives you that joy, gives you that happiness. A place of fear, it's somewhat negative. It gives you a lot of pressure. You will not be able to enjoy that. A place of love would generate limitless possibilities because you can start to dream. You can start your vision. And it brings that optimism into that whole energy. The third one is having this mindset of curiosity versus fun. In school, most of the time, we were kind of like asked to or we try to be smart and be intelligent in front of the class. Now we need to change that mindset a bit. It's about curiosity. So I'm okay to look silly for not knowing. I'm okay to raise my hand and say, I don't understand. Tell me more about it. Is that curiosity? I don't need to be smart. And focus on the learning versus right or wrong. It is very, very important. If you're here to learn, you're not here to defend something. You're just simply here to absorb. So remember that. So Pay attention to your thoughts when you're going through any of this. Are you learning or are you judging? Are you having that abun abun abundance mindset or you are functioning in the platform of fear? 
Are you in having a growing mindset or are you having a fixed mindset? So just pay attention to that thoughts of yours. And the last one, which is quite controversial, is about, are you willing to change your beliefs? Now, here's an interesting thought by Gandhi, and he's shared this, and, and I always have this in my mind. He said, beliefs become thoughts, and thoughts become words. Words will turn into action, and action becomes a habit, and habits becomes your core values, and your values will become your, test, your destiny. So be very, very mindful of what you believe in. Now, here's the next question. Do you question your beliefs? Is it still serving your purpose? Quite often we have been indoctrinated or we have a set of beliefs and we set on it and we defend it. We hold on to it. We say, this is our principle. I'm not saying that that is not right. Of course, if it is your belief, by all means do. But from time to time, you do need to question, is it still serving my purpose? If it's not, can you challenge it? Challenge the norm. Interesting enough, if we don't do this, we will still believe the world is flat instead of around. It's at one stage. It was not too long ago. Talking about a couple of hundred years ago, people still believe People in those days believed the world was flat for many, many centuries. And if you actually challenge, they will actually burn you to hell. Until someone say, no, I don't think so. Let's try it. Let's go and find out. And true enough, the world is not flat. So ask yourself, whatever you believe in, is it serving your purpose? If it's not, are you willing to challenge it? and change. If not, then you're stuck. So these are a few concepts to help you to change. Um, in a nutshell, in five to 10 minutes, if you have any questions, type in. It's easy to kind of like, when you read it on a textbook, when you read it on the internet, to understand all that. To walk the talk itself, it is hard. And that's why a life coach can come in to help you, to help you to walk one step at a time, to embrace this change, to serve your purpose, to achieve your dreams. So that's my 10 cents. Lynn, back to you. Thank you so much, Jody. Hope, guys, was that helpful for you? I've heard some of this before, but it's nice reminder, some of them. Um, it's a good reminder that all oh, certain things I should take note of. So, you guys, any questions for Jody before we end our session? <laughs> Christina, Christina Lim was saying that thank you for your awesome sharing, Jody. All that you've presented is so true. With lots and lots of thumbs up and hand clapping. <laughs> Christina Lim from Indonesia. Um, no, it's in Paul, I think. Okay. And uh, Keith Tan saying it's great information to refer to all the time. I think it'd be great if they could maybe go to your, um, I don't know, Facebook page um, and then maybe they could get some information like that there as well. Go and check it out, Dharma Life. <laughs> I think that's the, um, the, the, the Facebook page you can go and link in. Mm. So there's no further questions. I think we want to announce the winners, the two winners. Yes. Okay. Very soon. Yeah, we will announce the two winners very soon. But before that, Jody, maybe you could share with us, now that it's coming the end of August, it's another few months to the end of the year. How do you foresee um, things will be and how things will change since we're on the topic of change? Well, I wish I knew the answer. But what I do know is, what will things go back to normal? Like to the way it was before, pre-COVID? You said you mean, is that what you mean by normal? Yeah, well, this is the question. What do you mean by normal? Define normal. To me, there will be new norm. This is now the new norm. Mm. But there's no, no such things, right? If we were to meet, we try to meet in person. But now, everybody just simply are enjoying the convenience of, 
hey, we can meet virtually. We can have a virtual meetings. So if now this sets as the new bar of the new norm, what is going to happen next when you meet in person? Um, everybody now kind of like work from home and it still produce more or less the same active uh, productivities. So you've not even busier. <laughs> I feel busier while working from home. <laughs> so that would be the new norm. So if this is working now, so in the future, what would be the work, new work environment look like? Um, so it's the implication of the implication, right? And, and that's the part that we need to see. Uh, schooling, for example, mm. go online. Why do we need to go to school? Yeah. Hmm. So when we, when now it challenges us to look into what is the new education system that's going to help us. So in, in my old days, it was always been downloading. There's a teacher, they have a set of content, knowledge. Yeah. They download that to us and they test us how much we, we remember. Um, so now I'm looking into the education system is to teach you to learn how to learn. Part of that process is also to learn how to unlearn. Yeah. Like the it, habits we form when we were younger or learning. Yeah. So the mindsets we have, certain habits that doesn't help us now. You know, like you said just now, certain things that used to help us, it worked for us then, but it's not working for us now. So then how can we also change our belief and then translate to our words and action and so forth, then our future, it's always about changing and accepting change, I believe. Yeah, that is so true. Um, so learn how to learn, learn how to unlearn is equally important. And the future, it's going to be very different. How it's going to be, I, I don't have the foresight to see that part, but I definitely can feel it's changing very, very fast, faster than I could imagine. Mm. And it'll change even faster for two lucky individuals because they're going to win the fetal, fetal for their products and it will change your hair and your life. <laughs> so for the, would you, would you like to announce the winners, Jody? For the very first product, which is the Fetal Fener Fortifying Vitality Shampoo. I love this shampoo. It's fantastic. Lots of nice volume and cleanses so well. And the winner is... I can roll the drum. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Keith Tan. Or Tan Keith. Tan Keith. Yeah. Yes, Tan Keith. Congratulations. Okay. Well done. Enjoy that. Yeah, and for the second winner, we're giving away the uh, Fetal Fener Dietary Supplements that's worth $79.90. You pop in two pills every morning and it gives you really strong hair. It gives you lots of energy as well. It's filled with vitamin Bs and zinc. It's got biotin, omega-3, omega-6, fantastic product. My husband eats it every day. It's like keep his long hair. I'm not telling you by now, half the hair is gone. <laughs> and the winner is Jenny, Jenny. Jenny, Jenny, no. Yeah, on my screen said Jenny, Jenny. <laughs> For Jenny, Jenny. Congratulations, Jenny. So please uh, drop us a DM so we can tell you how to collect your prize, all right? So in the meantime, I want to thank our guest today, Jody, for being here with me and for us. And I hope it was interesting every week Every Feed Passion project, we try to bring in someone who can share something very different about their lives and what they do and make it really fun and educational and inspiring for all of you to tune in. Yeah, so that's really the purpose of why we do this particular show. So thank you very much. See you very soon. You can um, leave now. <laughs> okay, guys. So in a few days time, next Tuesday, we have our Fetal Hair Talk. And Fetal Hair Talk, you know, is more about educational, about products and about scalp and about hair condition and things like that. So it's more product and um, information focused, especially for people who are taking care of the scalp and hair. And we are going to talk about hair loss, like no more. So hair loss, no more. That's our topic. And I'll be hosting that on Tuesday, 8 o'clock, same channel. And on next Thursday, we're going to have a new segment 
too popular, demand, a lot of customers are asking us, a lot of people are asking us, friends and family, hey, Lynn, you keep talking about hair. How about my face? You also sell a very good skincare product, Lerak, right? I said, yes, we do. I didn't want to do it because it's like more work, right, for me. But okay, okay. I realized that we have to help. We have to educate. And that's what we have to do. So we're going to start doing that in September. Every Thursday at 8 o'clock, we're going to have Lerak Love Live. You get the get the meaning like we love to go live or we love life life itself <laughs> so so Lera love live is a beauty show that we're going to start every thursday at eight o'clock you can join me we're going to talk about different different things that bothers and affects men and women and our skin yeah from pigmentation to slackening wrinkles uh eyes dark circles to lines or so lip how our lips will tint to age neck Decote, body, stretch marks, etc. Et Everything you know about skin, even for men, you know, we have all this coming up every Thursday at 8 o'clock. So, really look forward to seeing you very soon. In the meantime, have a great, great weekend, and I'll catch you guys very soon. Good night. Nothing's gonna stop us, nothing's gonna top this, nothing like we've ever seen. And I raise my hand to the sky, what a feeling. Cause I feel like dancing high, got a feeling. Time to feel it. This is where it all begins. Hello, Mindy. What happened to my life? Are you still alive? Oh, my shitty, my shitty man. Shitty. It shows you are still alive. Eh? I'm still alive.